What's good, YouTube? This is your boy, Damian Cryer. I hope each and every one of you guys is having a wonderful and very, very blessed Sunday. Uh, me, guys, I'm doing just fine. Um, I know you guys have been wondering for a while where I've been. Seems like I've been on a milk carton lately. I've been dropping videos sporadically here and there. Um, not really a whole lot of videos. Um, but today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's actually like a special video right here. So um, a lot of people in the comment sections um, in past videos and in current videos have always asked me, how did you and DW meet? What makes y'all so close? And how do y'all maintain a strong relationship? Um, so as you guys know, this is my guy, DW. What's going on, guys? And uh, y'all know me and DW, we work together at the steel mill. We have worked together for probably 10 plus years now. A long time. So we we worked for a lot of years together. Uh, he's a, he, DW started off as a mechanic, which he still is. I started off as a machine operator, which I still operate machines from time to time. Um, only difference is I have a small title this time. They call it lead. Basically, I'm, I'm like, somebody call off, I can jump in and fill those shoes and fill that slot. DW is the guy, however, if I break something, he's the guy who comes over and he's responsible for fixing it. So if I break something, he fixes it. He fixes it, I break it. Sometime on purpose. On purpose, just to come, just for me to come see him. Okay. <laughs> so, I will have to say, our relationship as friends started, I think, about... 10 years ago. Um, I would say so. Yeah. So what was it like on Danelli line? They put the line they in. They put the line in. And when I first started, y'all think, you, you guys all thought that what? I was one hardcore guy. I was mean. I had some type of attitude. You remember back in the day? Think. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, there was a little bit of a different change when him and I started talking. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> in a way, so, yeah, I guess when they put the line in 2007, and it was up and running in 2008, mm -hmm. DW started working there. It was kind of odd because, you know, when he started working there or working on my line, I was the guy with the attitude because I figured this is my machine. I know how to run it. You're not going to come over here telling me what to do. He used to tell me, hey, dude, you need to adjust the pressures. You need to adjust this. And then he get mad. And I found out that he's one of those guys. You talk crazy to him. He's going to talk crazy back to you. He ain't going to let you just talk crazy to him the way you want. So I guess that's how we just, after a few words with each other, I realized that the dude was pretty cool, and he's definitely not going to back down. No, but he won't either. <laughs> so, I so, think, yeah, you go ahead. So, besides us both not backing down, we decided that, hey, it'd be better off if we became friends. Oh, see, look at that. He's got to do the... <laughs> anyway, it's crazy. Anyway, so after years of all that crazy stuff, back and forth, you know, I won't lie, man. It got to a point where I was break, purposely breaking stuff just to get you over there. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, you know, you say something to me crazy and then you want to walk away. I figure <laughs> I got a way to get you. Oh, yeah. He does get me, too. Because I know as soon as that maintenance call go out on the radio, I know they're going to call the most experienced operator over for that machine, which is him. <laughs> he come over, fix the machine. I won't even speak to him. No, he give me some... So Kermit the Frog look. Peripheral vision. <laughs> Hold your head straight, your eyeballs go that way. And he wouldn't talk to me. Absolutely wouldn't, not. Wouldn't even tell me what's wrong with the machine. I'd have to actually try to figure it out first. Absolutely not. And heard then, that? And then after that, I finally started figuring it out, what, what he was breaking. And then I caught on, and he was like, all right, all right. So finally we started talking. So with that being said, guys, after we started talking over the years, I found out that DW was married and had kids. And then he found out that I was married and I had kids. Yeah. And uh, we always talked about like the first year or two, maybe three years, that um, 
you know, one day we should hook up, our family should meet each other, our kids should hook up. And we always made plans, but it was procrastinated, mainly by me. I've always had stuff going on. And then it didn't um, happen until I separated from my wife and got a divorce, and DW became really close. Um, you know, we became really good friends. You know, him and his wife was a good support system for me. And now um, I bring Darian along with me to DW's house. You know, we do videos together, little stuff like that. We're supposed to be doing more challenges and stuff, actually. Yes. But with me having Darian on the weekends and trying to do stuff with him, father and son stuff, and then trying to, you know, do different things. And then DW working days that I'm not working, like weekends, so it's kind of hard. Um, so he doesn't live like two blocks away from me either. He lives miles away from me. Same city, but miles. So I think at one time DW had quit working there to pursue better opportunities. So he ended up uh, leaving our job one day. And Which it was, did hurt our friendship a little bit. Yes, it hurt our friendship because it went from like texting each other every once in a while in the beginning to almost not really hearing anything. Right. You know, and the decision that he made to depart the company, which he's currently back, the decision that he made to part ties with the company was to pursue a better opportunity for him and his family. Um, but um, he's now back. And so it's almost like when I found out he was coming back, back joining the team, I was happier, happier, happier. So since then, since he's been back with the company, we've, we've, we've gotten closer. Um, again, he's, he's um, been really, really, really strong support system um, for me and a lot of stuff that I went through last year. Um, so now we we just do dumb stuff together. We dance together. Y'all might have seen a couple <laughs> dance challenges. Even at work. <laughs> yeah. So people are like, well, they want to know, well, how did you guys get so cool, you know, to have this thing, you know, um, black versus white or white versus black, you know, and that's not the way to look at the world, in my opinion. You know, you don't look at the world by skin color. You know, you look at it because regardless what color you are, you know, your kids have to eat just like the other kids of different colors. Your kids have to breathe the same air like kids of different color. You know, it's the struggle is everywhere. You know, we all struggle regardless what color we are. The struggle is the same for all of us. You know, so a lot of questions is like, you know, how did y'all become so cool, you know, of different race and this and that. You know, it's not hard. It's all about having a mutual respect for one another. You know, I've told DW countless of times, and I'm not ashamed. I told DW a while back, because he's like, hey, man, why do you say you're coming? And then my wife, you know, and kids think that you're coming, and then you don't come. And so one day I broke down and told DW, I said, you know, I got really jealous, you know, seeing you and your family together. You know, um, it kind of made me a little jealous seeing your daughter on her birthday with her new guitar and showing daddy how to play her new guitar. You know, it was like a jealousy thing because it was like, man, I had this life right here before where I was doing stuff like this, opening up gifts with my family. It's like now I don't have that life. I mean, I do, but it's by choices. I guess basically I'm scared. DW, he's always been a support system. He's always telling me, don't rush into nothing. Don't rush into nothing. And I'll listen to my friend, you know, because he ain't never steered me wrong. You know, but he's always like, maybe you ought to try to meet someone and, you know, become whole again. But I believe a person can be whole, become whole again being by himself. So he's always been there for me. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? He's a lot younger than me. I'm 48. And you're what? I'm 35. 48 and 35. What could we possibly have in common at age 48 and 35? Well, for starters, we love the water, but DW buys a boat and don't ever take it out. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah. He buys a boat and never takes it out. So that's something that we have in common. So I asked myself, 48 and 35, what do we have in common? We work the same job. We both in the beginning hated what we do, but we learned to love what we're doing. Yep. Why not? If it's gonna feed our family, put money in our pocket, keep a roof over our head, keep our significant others or our kids happy and content, 
we may not be able to give them what they want all the time, but we can definitely give them what they need. And that's what's important, yep. giving them what they need. The wants can come later, you know, but so that's the way I can get my answer to um, why we stay so close, why we have such a strong bond, you know, why we keep it real with, you, with each other, you know, regardless of what it is. If we ever need to talk, we talk. We work at the same company, believe it or not. We work at the same company 10, 12 hours a day. And believe it or not, throughout them 10 or 12 hours a day that we at work, we're passing each other. All the time. He's on his golf cart making a run to another department to fix the machine, or he's making a run doing this and that, and we're together all day. Yeah. But we still manage to make time. Sometimes he pulls up on me on his golf cart to speak to me, but I'm on the phone with my son, Damon, and I'll be like, Debbie, I can't talk right now. My shift starts in a little bit. But we still find time to talk. We find time to talk even if it's on a weekend. Yeah. We make it happen. So I've been coming out a lot more, not as much as I should, but I've been coming out a lot more. Um, plus, he has kids, and when you tell kids something, you better stick with it. You don't make a kid a promise if you're not going to stick with it. That's right. Like Y'all seen that video last week where I jumped my butt in the pool and they attacked. I don't know if like that's a swarm of bees. They attacked. They attacked. So, you know, I got a lot of love for this man right here. This is a really good guy. He's a strong family man. You know, he reminds me of what I once had, and he also reminds me of what I can have again. You know, let me know that no matter what you go through, you know, um, things is gonna get better, things are gonna change. Sometimes that's all you need is a friend. You don't need multiple friends. I don't have a whole lot of friends that I can't go with, but he is one I definitely can't go with. Even though we see each other five, six days a week. We still try to make time to you know, see each other even on the off shift. Too. Yeah. I, you know, I come to his house, him and his wife have been to my little apartment, and I've been to their house, you know, and we see each other, we keep it cool, we keep it real, we talk regularly, and that's what it's all about. So, that's why I feel that our bond is, is uh, really strong and why we stay close, you know. And we don't look at each other as just friends either, we look at each other as family. And my wife and I and the kids look at Damien as like an uncle. So. That's another thing is that we try to keep our friends really, really close and try to make them close like family. And we've we've expressed that to Damien and his boy being that they're not just friends. They're they're family and they're always welcome here. Yeah, so so with that being said, guys, so we are at about thirteen minutes on this, so we're gonna go ahead and end this. But we want to do this vlog for you guys, short video, short vlog, whatever you guys wanna call it. Y'all wanna call it a short video? Y'all wanna call it a short vlog? Just don't call it a blog. <laughs> Can you say vlog? Vlog. 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 <laughs> anyway, man. So. Uh, that is it and we just wanted to drop this video, you know, DW suggested last night that we do something like this um, It didn't take me uh, long to make a decision to do it. It's something I wanted to do You know when you guys first met DW, you know uh, Seeing him on some of my YouTube videos. It was just basically Me and my co-worker dancing going to my co-workers house going to and then it went from co-worker to my best friend's birthday my best friend's daughter's birthday at my best friend's house. So you see the trend there, it went from this level to this level right here. And so we're gonna to continue to try to come up higher on those levels. Yes. Recently I've talked to DW's wife, um, very, very, very sweet young lady, very family oriented, you know, um, real, real respectful people, man. And, you know, we talked about, you know, them starting a YouTube channel, we're doing stuff on my channel, but um, that stuff is going to be coming soon um, and in the near future. Um, DW and his wife have a lot of different things going on in their personal life right now. But um, some more good things are to come in the future, guys. So anyway, I appreciate you guys that took the time on your Sunday afternoon to watch our video. DW, just want to tell you, man, much love to you, bro. Yes, sir. Just like a brother to me. That ain't going to never change and we will never let that die. But until next time, guys, I'm Damian Cryer. I'm DW. And we will talk to you guys in the next vlog. Peace. Peace.